Hi, welcome to WeldNerd. Today we're going to walk through the tech menu on the Dynasty 280 and 210DX. Alright, we're going to get into the tech menu with the same two buttons that we used to get into the user menu, only this time instead of pushing it momentarily, we're going to hold them for a three count, and that'll get us into the tech menu. Well, we start off with arc time and cycle count. Uh, this gives us a cumulative record of uh, how much arc on time the machine has had in hours and minutes, and then also discrete arc cycles. Um, and then we can reset it here. Just press the flashing amperage button. That's how you reset it. So if you never want to reset it, uh, this will just tell you how much time your machine has had arc on. Um, or if you wanted to figure out how much arc, arc on time uh, you have within a given, like a shift or something like that. You reset it beforehand, check it after. Next up we have the error log. This records eight different discrete error codes. Uh, so if you're speaking to a service tech, either at Miller or at a service location, they might ask you to check this because uh, it'll give them an idea of exactly what's going on when, in the machine if, uh, if something's misbehaving. Sleep timer set for 1, 5, 10, 20, 30, 45 minutes or an hour. And this functions just like any other sleep timer you've ever used. If the machine isn't used within this period, it shuts off. Uh, you can turn it back on with the soft power button. Um, from a safety perspective, if your machine is unattended, and it remains on, and there's any likelihood that something might, I don't know, fall, fall on it, hit a, uh, hit a pedal, someone might walk by, trip over it, something like that. You never ever want uh, an errant arc strike uh, fire hazard. It's just a good idea, even from just an electrical perspective, to get it shut off. Uh, it's also handy for those of us who may, I don't know, forget to shut the machine off before they walk out of the garage or easily distracted. Next, we have stick stock. If the machine, while you're stick welding, since it's a sustained short, meaning you've stuck your electrode, uh, it'll cut the power output. So what that does is uh, when you snap your electrode free, it means you're not going to drag your arc outside of the weld zone, uh, so you don't have to repair that. Um, if you snap your stinger off your electrode, it's not going to wear down the pad, you know, erode the pad with the arc. Uh, and you're not going to continue to resistively heat your electrode, baking off the flux or anything like that. Very handy, can be turned on or off. Your open circuit voltage can be set to either normal, which is in the upper 50s, uh, or low, which is 8 to 12 volts. Uh, sometimes some job sites, due to code requirements, will require a low OCV uh, condition on your machine. Weld timers, this is on or off. What this does is this enables the functionality of the spot timer function. Uh, that's interacted with on the main interface. We'll have another video on that. I want to jump out of the menu right now. A machine has what's called cooler on demand. So as right now, the cooler is not running. It's on, the machine's on, it's ready to weld, but it's not running. If I were to strike an arc, the cooler will then begin to run. It'll circulate coolant for the entire duration of the weld. Uh, after the arc is extinguished, it'll continue to run for a period of time, 30 seconds or so, to bring your torch back down to like an ambient temperature, at which point it'll shut off. Uh, this is very useful because it reduces your electrical consumption it reduces the wear and tear on the cooler, and again, as you can hear right now, if you don't have a terribly noisy work environment, it really helps keep things quiet uh, and reduce noise pollution. This can also be turned off, so there's just no output to the cooler. Um, so if you're running an air-cooled torch, if you've separated your power source from your cooler uh, for portability, mobility reasons, then you just don't want that, uh, don't want that current going out to the receptacle. We have four different lockout levels, and these each restrict a different amount of uh, the functionality of the machine. So if you don't want somebody changing certain things, uh, and we'll go into that in another video that's, that's long enough for another one. While you're welding, your meters can either read out the unfiltered voltage and amperage, they can read nothing, or they can show you an average. Uh, VA works just fine for me. EXPC, external pulsing controller. So if you have a standalone pulser unit and you wanted to use it with this machine instead of the onboard pulser, uh, you would go ahead and turn this on, hook up your equipment, and what that does is it, uh, it really eliminates all of the intervening uh, controls and software in between the input and the arc itself. So it allows that pulser direct control of the arc. Machine reset. So somebody has gotten hold of your machine, 
maybe you, but somebody has gotten hold of your machine and has started pushing buttons and spinning knobs with reckless abandon and gotten it into a really whacked out condition where it's just not welding even remotely how you want it to. Uh, sometimes it can be a heck of a lot quicker to go to machine reset, go to yes, hit the button, it sets everything back to factory default where you can work from there rather than trying to chase down each individual parameter and find out what's different. This tells you the software number and the revision, this one being P. Um, if you go on to MillerWelds.com, check the software updates. Um, you can check your number against that number, see if, uh, if there's a new revision out there. Serial number. So if your machine has been subjected to some sort of external abuse where you can no longer read the serial number, uh, it's always permanently recorded digitally in here. It can't be erased, can't be changed, so you'll always have it. That gets us back to arc time and cycle count. We've come full circle, and now we get out the same way we got in, press the amperage and the gas dig. We don't have to hold it. We get right back out to the interface. We're ready to weld instead of talking about menus. Thanks.